Hey you guys, so I have a failed door handle. So I'm gonna show you what it takes to get in there and fix it without taking the door handle out. All right, now that we have the door open, I had to open it from the inside. We have to take two screws out from behind this handle here, and then one down there. That's a nine millimeter and then Torx, specifically a T27. So once you get those out, you have to pop out all the pop rivets around the edge of the door. And you end up getting this on the inside. So I'm gonna go ahead and unplug all those cables. All right, now that we have all that out, we're gonna pull this protective layer away. And that should reveal the handle mechanism. All right, so we found the culprit without taking the handle out. There's a broken wire on the micro switch right there. I'm gonna show you how I got the handle to retract and stay retracted when I opened the door. So the first thing is you have to lock the car while you're inside of the back seat with the door open. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, lock it. Okay, handle retract so that we can get to the switch. It's kind of hard to see. But now we have to unplug the power to the handle so that it doesn't open up again when we open the door. So you have a few connectors. It's difficult to do with one hand. Okay, and then one more down here. All right, so now we can open the door using this emergency um, tab down here. So I open the door and the handle is still retracted. <clears throat> And we can see the switch right there. Turns out I can get to the wires on the switch without actually taking the handle out or the switch out. There was a black cover covering these terminals. So I pulled that off and we can see that the white wire is the one that got broken. So I'm gonna unsolder this wire here, strip this wire and re-solder it on there. And then I'll have to figure out a way to seal it so that it doesn't get, um, you know, the terminals don't get corroded. Okay, I got some heat shrink installed. Now I'm going to tin the wire that I stripped here so that I can easily solder it onto the terminal up there. It took me a few tries, but finally got it on there. It's not the prettiest solder joint, but we'll see if it works. After plug in the connectors again. If I soldered it with the plug connectors plugged in, there would be, um, the, basically the circuit would be powered and I could risk shorting things out. So I unplugged that before I did anything. So I've got three connectors plugged in. I got this one, this guy, and this one. Let's see if it works. Hey! Uh-oh, doesn't seem to be working that well. It looks like I may have damaged the switch by soldering it too much, because you have to pull it pretty firmly to open the door. It's, but it seems to work reliably. I might have gotten the switch too hot while I was soldering it, because this middle pin is a little bit loose. Whereas the top one that I didn't touch is pretty firm in there. So I think the switch works okay, but I might have damaged it a little bit. We'll see how long it lasts with this repair. Now I'm gonna put the heat, some heat shrink over that connector, over the solder joint to try to protect it from the elements. All right, I'm putting the door back together. I have all the wires plugged back in. I figured out it's easier to put the clips from this weather stripping in first 
and then gonna I'll insert it like this. Okay, perfect. And now we should be able to push the door on to completely straight once we get all these pins lined up. Now I just gave it a few firm presses across the edge, all the way up the side and across the top. It's sitting flush now. So now all I have to do is put this bolt back in, in the handle, and then two more right there. So to put this screw in, you're going to need a 9mm and an extension. Alright, we'll put this rubber grommet back in there. We have the whole door back together, covers on here. Now let's just make sure everything works. Yep, window works. Okay. Let's make sure the handle works. Yep. All right, sweet. Mission success.